I thank you everybody for your time and joining us this morning. My name is Greg Demchak. I lead a uh, the Bentley Innovation Lab um, from Bentley Systems here in uh, in London in the UK. Um, today I'm going to talk about this idea of the construction digital twin and try and walk us through just a, a brief history of sort of the origin story, um, how 4D sort of evolved in the construction space and where we see um, this moving forward um, as we evolve our understanding of this idea for, for project delivery. Um, so this is really for me, just a brief story in evolution. And the reason I put this video up here, this is just a video of how human beings come into being. It's always about one- Hey Greg, yeah. sorry about this, but I don't think we can see your screen. Can you share oh, it again, please? Let's try. Let's see, is that playing? Thank you, yes. Okay. Yeah, construction digital twin and, okay, here we go. Story of evolution, sorry about that. <clears throat> I wanna kind of start off with this idea that everything starts with, usually innovation starts with two separate ideas coming together to form uh, something new. And if you think about the metaphor of this, this is a you know human life coming into being, um, emerging two different people coming into one. Um, really, I think this idea of 4D is, is essentially a metaphor of that. What, what happened with 4D was the combination of 3D models and the schedule coming together to produce something um, quite new. So I'm going to walk through very quickly here um, how this idea emerged from an idea, how it became socialized in uh, the culture, what it means to scale this up, and what an ecosystem like uh, could look like as we should really think about the impact of 4D at a broader scale. So the first idea of 4D um, that I like to bring up goes all the way back to 2001, the first real prototype. And if you haven't already reviewed this paper, I would encourage everyone to just go check it out. This is from January 2001 and the use of 4D at the Walt Disney uh, Concert Hall. So this was a co collaboration with SciFi at Stanford and also um, Frank Gehry Architects and Mortensen Construction. And they basically proved out the, the fundamental value of 4D. And it's all written up in this paper and then we're almost 20 years in. So if you have any questions about just the fundamental value of a of 4D modeling for, for scheduling and, and project verification, I would encourage everyone to kind of go back to that first idea. Um, then we get into uh, Synchro Software. So Synchro Software was basically um, trying to scale up that idea into a product that could go into the market. And this was really first introduced here in, in London in, in anger with the development of the Shard, which is a, a well-known piece of architecture here in London. So it was used by Mace at that time to actually uh, build the Shard here in London. So this was a demonstration of what started out as an idea, a prototype from from academia and, and sort of the education space into a functional product that could be delivered at scale into the market. This is a desktop software application. I'm going back to 2007. I, I joined Synchro in 2014. Um, then we saw other companies such as uh, Mortensen Construction in the US um, produce a report uh, back in 2013. They were early adopters of this technology and in fact, almost every major sports stadium that's been erected in the United States in the last, um, since this time, almost decade, has used a 4D model um, in its production to keep that project on schedule and, and on budget. And they continue to use um, 4D to this day for the delivery of all their major um, stadium projects. Image at the bottom is an uh, animation of the Golden State Warriors project in San Francisco recently completed. And up above is uh, another project that they're working on in Las Vegas, a new stadium uh, for, the, for the Oakland Raiders. So this is used in production on a daily basis and it has been in production for, for many, many years. And they captured a lot of these key metric points in this report they put out um, all the way back in 2013. So again, if anyone needs kind of a reference, I, I would say Mortensen is a great one and uh, just a, a nice example of, of 4D in operation in, in, in the real world. Um, back in 2016, this is a couple of years after I joined, we really wanted to think about how do you scale this solution um, 
to go beyond just an animation and a 4D simulation coming out of a desktop solution, we started working with Crossrail here in the, in the UK. And we moved all of our technology into a cloud environment on top of running on top of Microsoft Azure. And what that basically allowed us to do is build an API. And it meant that the, the data that was authored in the core platform, the desktop application, could exist in the server, it could have be wrapped with an API, and we could start to send that information to other devices, such as a field application, the HoloLens, and, and Power BI. So that was, like, that was like our first step into the cloud. Um, and then in 2018, Synchro Software, we were acquired by uh, Bentley Systems. And part of that acquisition was really moving that cloud concept um, to scale. And so what this meant is we've now built the Synchro uh, environment now on top of something called iTwin, which is an a federator, an aggregator of 3D models, documents, the schedule, issues, um, RFIs, all of this, everything that can be wrapped around a, a construction project now is being stored in this central repository, this digital twin. And part of the evolution of Synchro has been to basically scale up this cloud architecture uh, to leverage this core technology that's being developed here at, at Bentley Systems um, called, called the iTwin architecture. And so what it means now is you can see at the bottom here, it's that same uh, uh, stadium from uh, Mortens and Golden State Warriors. Now for the first time able to run inside uh, a web browser using this technology. So the schedule is accessible and visible in a web browser and the model is accessible in a web browser. And, it could, and that same information can be pulled out into the field through an iPad app and into Power BI for reporting. So this is kind of that next um, scale of, of evolution uh, that we're seeing. Um, as far as where we see things going next is an investment in uh, an open API, an open architecture, so that it's not just Synchro products, right, branded products that are available, but an API that allows any third party developer to access that information and then start to innovate and build on top of that core platform. Um, here's one of one of the examples. One of the early partners that have entered the program is Vegas, and they're also developing for AR and, and HoloLens. And the idea here is that they can build an experience on top of core digital twin data, in this case, engineering models and reality capture uh, photogrammetry and align that content with the physical world. So what it means is that we're building a, an open ecosystem that enables innovation to accelerate um, at scale in a way that you can't do if you're trying to build every single product in, internally uh, yourself. So the concept is really this, it started out with a basic idea. The idea grew, became a, a desktop product. That product then expanded into the cloud and started to uh, get more opportunity service to go into the field and into reporting. And now when we expose uh, these APIs to a much wider audience, uh, it starts to open the door for an ecosystem where basically whatever you want to build should be possible to create. So if you're facing a problem that you want to eliminate, really want to, this is a prompt to think about this. Don't expect that the answer might always be that an existing product is gonna solve the problem. In some cases, a product won't solve your problem. You might have a very specific use case you're trying to get at. And this is where developing APIs, this is the core investment now of Bentley, developing APIs will allow people to solve problems um, at any scale. So if an existing product can't do it, you should be able to leverage these APIs and, and build new products on top of that. And in fact, that's sort of one of the missions of this innovation lab that I'm starting this year in, uh, in London, which is to help these companies get off the ground with these APIs and, and start to solve problems um, much faster and at scale. And I'll just end here with one last clip here. This is an example of an internal um, test of prototype with a, with a customer using the same uh, ideas. Like if you have all these parts, in this case, a, a reality capture model and you have a HoloLens and you've got a backend that can handle all this content, are there opportunities to leverage uh, this technology in new ways? And so what does it mean if you could 
um, load a model like this from a, a drone capture scan and start to inspect and navigate through this kind of content um, through a tool like the Microsoft HoloLens. And so the concept here is, is really about a remote inspection or a remote way to interact with your assets um, in a way that was never before possible. And so the idea here is this is all built on top of that um, core iTwin um, ecosystem. So really looking forward to seeing um, what's next, you know, as we move from sort of point solutions, desktop applications to like a fully um, open cloud architecture and seeing where we can uh, explore the space um, together. So I know that was quick. Um, hope that was interesting and uh, looking forward to see what's next. So thank you very much. It was mind blowing. I mean, that is just some fantastic stuff. And I think the coolest aspect of course is that it's all on an open architecture so that you guys can play fair and play nice with everybody else in the industry. Um, do you have any um, comments along the lines of what we were discussing yesterday with regards to um, APIs uh, being challenged uh, in the Supreme Court in the US yesterday or um, d different ways that people are looking at the future with this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the attitude of, of Bentley systems right now, and by the way, I want to mention this, if, if people didn't see the news recently, Bentley, we recently um, had our first uh, official IPO. So the company's now traded publicly on NASDAQ. And I think part of this is now a commitment to, uh, you know, publicly traded shares and shareholders. And that, that, that Bentley, uh, the focus here is on this idea of the digital twin. And the only way to, I think, successfully go into the market and, and talk about a digital twin for the world's infrastructure is, is an open architecture. And that's the only way that we can imagine this working. Um, if you think about the range of of, of different requirements from city to city, from municipality to municipality, um, the range of different 3D authoring platforms out there, the range of different scheduling solutions out there. If you're not an open architecture that allows information to flow in and out, um, yeah. then I think there's no way we can really deliver this idea of the digital twin. So that's kind of at the sort of at the DNA of Bentley right now. And that's where that expanding ecosystem, we think that's where the real value is going to be is, is opening up those APIs, allowing people to build solutions on top of this uh, technology and not trying to like, you know, contain it and, and bottle it up. 